here's what we know. Uh, climate change can threaten health through direct effects of heat. Heat's not good for people, especially when it happens suddenly and, and episodically. Through uh, severe weather events, meteorologic phenomena like flooding, droughts, and so on, all of those threaten health in, in various ways. Through effects on air quality, uh, climate change threatens the quality of air, which in turn threatens respiratory and cardiovascular health in a number of ways through potential for the spread of infectious diseases, both the vector-borne diseases, those that spread through ticks and mosquitoes and so on, and the waterborne diseases, both linked to changes in climate. And then there are some areas that are a little bit less well understood, but potentially important. The effects on mental health, effects on food production, uh, potentially a very large impact on health, especially in other parts of the world. Effects mediated by civil conflict and by displacement and dislocation of populations, which can be very disruptive and, and um, corrosive of public health. So given that inventory of potential effects, there's lots of reasons to think that climate change is a health problem. And then to study it better, understand it better, understand the steps that we need to take to protect the public, and begin to take those steps. For the first couple of decades of, of uh, our awareness of climate change, uh, a lot of the discussion was driven by climate science. And that's understandable. We didn't have good certainty that the climate was actually changing or in what ways. And the most important issue was to resolve the climate science and to understand better the changes taking place in Earth systems. Once that becomes better established, it then becomes possible to ask the question, what will be the impacts on health? And that's happening now. We're seeing an enormous increase in the interest in health uh, from a variety of sources. The, the health uh, professionals and agencies, universities, the environmental agencies, agencies such as NOAA and NASA that are essentially earth science agencies, but that understand that human dimensions are an important part of what they do. So we're seeing a, a vast increase now in the interest. Uh, research funds are beginning to flow. Uh, at the CDC, we've now got a program of research. Other agencies are doing the same. And so I think it, we're learning a lot more about the health impacts of climate change, and that's, that's all for the good. There are lots of steps to take. Some have to do with adaptation, uh, preparing so that people don't suffer the potential consequences as much as they otherwise would. Others have to do with mitigation, which we think of as primary prevention. But there's a good news story that wraps all of this together, and that is that as we take steps to address climate change, we can simultaneously protect health and protect the environment and achieve economic victories, uh, opportunities, uh, economic development. And if those co-benefits can be shown to work as they very often do, that's a good news story. So for example, we need people to walk and bike more and drive less. We're an increasingly sedentary and overweight society. We need to do that for health reasons. But by the way, walking and biking more and driving less means that we burn fewer fossil fuels, and that's one of the things we need to do to address climate change. So these co-benefits between health interventions and environmental interventions and economic development, all of which help us address climate, are uh, the good news story lurking behind uh, what sounds like the challenge of climate change.